It's not easy, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I happen to be touch wood, right? Very passionate about what I do. And um, with passion comes this insatiable sort of curiosity uh, and uh, care for everything you build. And um, what you realize is when you put stuff in the market, uh, it's going to be something you have to be proud about. And the only way you can be proud about something is if you ensure that all the details are put together very properly. And so for that perspective, and we have phenomenal teams, by the way, I must say, we've, we've spent a lot of time, and I should have started with that, but, you know, we spent a lot of time investing a lot of effort into building a phenomenal team. And I announced on stage that, we've, you know, we hire one in 1,250. That's a very small number, and it annoys us because at the end of the day, we're not proud about having that number because I'd like it to be one in 100. Mm. Uh, and so that's how difficult hiring is in India. So I think um, building phenomenal teams uh, hiring phenomenal people who are proactive, who care, whose learning curves are very, very high, who are overly curious, makes my life a lot easier. Uh, because if I have guys who are, you know, working on certain, for example, the way I see sort of BSP is if I have a very smart uh, and very sort of uh, get shit done kind of guy in the company, on the product side and the tech side in every company, my life is okay. Uh, because they can go and help you execute and sort of build the product based on the vision that you have. So I think hiring the team is the most important piece. And when you end up hiring these guys who are as passionate, if not more passionate than you are, um, you all as a bunch are in the same boat. Mm. And it's like, you know, the captain might be looking sort of one way, but you have all your guys looking everywhere. And they're telling you what's happening. So that helps a lot. So I think that, you know, hiring the, the, the people who are very proactive, not who have the best skills, but who are passionate about the industry, who can think 10 steps ahead of you, keep you relevant. And it's very hard to find those guys. As a matter of fact, one of the guys we hired who's like that is from Textbox last year. Oh, yeah? I bumped into him randomly and he came to the office and we hired him on the spot. Oh, yes. And so, you know, people like, you know, them and, and we have a lot of engineers in our team who are like that too. Mm. Uh, and uh, it's, it's good because, uh, you know, you never miss a thing because everyone has different perspectives. Mm. And you get a, you know, if, it's like a piece of a puzzle. If, if, if there are 10 pieces, uh, the engineering pieces from the engineering team, the sort of product pieces from the product team and so on and so forth. And so hiring a really good team, I think, is very important to keeping me relevant in the market. Sure. And also helping me build a fundamental to look three, four years ahead mm -hmm. and figure out what's going on. Sure. Um, the market, in my opinion, is going to change drastically in the next two, three years. Mm -hmm. uh, hardware is going to make a big comeback. Mm -hmm. um, you're seeing a lot of open source hardware projects like Arduino mm -hmm. take off. Mm -hmm. I have a 3D printer in my house that I'm experimenting with right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, and this is, you know, I think this is important. Mm -hmm. Experimentation all the time. And it's very Easy to get a 3D printer these days. You know, you pay $500 and get something off the shelf. You can start experimenting with that tomorrow itself. And um, it really helps you figure out how you can make existing behavior better. Uh, imagine these technologies you have today, five years from now. Sure. Uh, if you look at the 3D printer today itself, it's not the most um, advanced piece of technology, but it's really cool. Mm. It can print 3D objects in plastic. Now, if you look at it on a big scale, you can print stuff in steel and so on and so forth. If you look five years out, um, imagine what's going to happen. Yeah. And based on that, um, can you think of ideas that could use these technologies three years down the line to improve existing behavior? Yeah. So that's what BSP thinks about in general. And if you look at all our companies, we tackle, that we, we tackle each vertical based on that philosophy. Can we solve a problem? Uh, if, there's a, uh, if, if the problem is then the market and we have an opportunity to make the behavior 10 times easier and better, can we build a product? And so people don't think, from, I mean, we don't think from technology. At the end of the day, you know, initially early on, we used to have a lot of debates about technology. And why it's a good thing, um, consumers don't give a shit. They don't, right? If you're writing your backend in eJava DX or MP2D, it doesn't matter, right? It has to work. Yeah. And so that's what I keep telling my team that, you know, at the end of the day, what matters is, um, you know, are you solving a problem for the consumer? Is the experience, you know, amazing? And does it function really well? For example, we had a lot of traction back in uh, Feb, March for Hike by building the referral scheme. But one of the biggest problems we had was we didn't realize the, the, the jump in scale we'll get. You know, we saw a 50x, that's 5,000% increase in our traffic on a week. Wow. And I don't, see, I don't think anyone in the world has seen that kind of increase. Mm. And so we weren't prepared for that. And the problem was, as a result of that, uh, we saw some churn in the system. Mm. Because there's so many messaging apps out there that you have to be very reliable. So at the end, end of the day, um, 
you know, you have to just build a very nice and very sort of seamless end-to-end consumer experience. Mm. No matter which vertical you might be working in, enterprise, consumer, hardware, software, does not matter. Yeah. So that's how we look at the market. Mm-hmm.